Okay, so episode one of Dragon Ball Daima is here. It is called Conspiracy, and I'm gonna just keep it all the way thorough with y'all. I am just gonna be straight up raw and real with every review of Dragon Ball Daima. So it is what it is. If your feelings are invested in it, you're gonna hear my opinion. And if you feel a certain way, tis what it is. Because this has been long awaited. I've seen all the trailers and I've been massively excited. And here we are, a first episode of 32 minutes and some odd change off rip i gotta say before we start this it was interesting that for the most part we didn't really get the quote-unquote z warriors being central and core to the episode up until about the end like a lot of the episode was just focusing in on the demon realm and these new characters goma degesu and adinsu it was pretty much just kind of focusing on that oh and as we continue yo hit that subscribe button and that bell i promise i'll bring you some incredible content and you'll be able to be updated when i drop that content so hit them buttons you dig but essentially episode starts off with a recap a dragon ball recap we get little glimpses of the beginning all the way up until majin buu and then it really focuses in on key elements from the buu saga and the reason being for that is that this takes place before super but after majin buu in that little time period there therefore they're trying to emphasize the importance of the buu saga because technically in the story right now it's fresh i also felt like they was making an attempt shall i say to kind of grab new viewers grab new fans that maybe aren't a part of dragon ball because they kind of tried their best to explain dragon ball as a whole as quickly as they possibly could so it seems like yeah dragon ball daima what a lot of people have been saying like oh this is meant to grab new fans i think it's trying to do both i think it's trying to remind old fans why you like dragon ball start the seedlings of what this series is going to be but also be like hey come one come all this is Dragon Ball Daima. Anyone can get into it. You don't need to know about Dragon Ball. We'll tell you all about it within the first few minutes. But essentially during this recap, we get to see and we get to find out that apparently Supreme Kai has a younger brother. The character Degesu, if you've seen the trailers, he looked like Supreme Kai. He is indeed Supreme Kai, aka Shin's younger brother. And he's rocking with this dude Goma. And essentially they're in the demon realm. And I feel like this episode, it did a couple of different things and it accomplished a couple of different things in terms of like world building because we've only heard inklings and little whispers of the demon realm in Dragon Ball. Like we heard of course via Deborah that he was the king of the underworld, king of the demon world, but we never really got too much exposition or too much diving into what the heck the demon world even is. So it felt like with this episode it really took the opportunity to expand on the lore of all of that jazz. But also again like with this recap for example, it felt like it was playing on, I don't want to say necessarily nostalgia, but for example them reanimating some very important key moments from Dragon Ball Z like having the Majin Vegeta scenes being reanimated going as far as reanimating the moment where he blew up against Majin Buu and stuff like that they definitely wanted to make sure again to give fans like new fans hey here's a recap old fans hey here's something reanimated from Dragon Ball Z and honestly it made me think similar to how we just had the 20th anniversary thing with Bleach and we had the 25th anniversary animation for Naruto where it was reanimating stuff from the series is like yo a lot of us would love a reanimated true to blue reanimated dragon ball z unlike what they did with dragon ball kai where they kind of just touched up the paint and stuff like that like yo having those scenes they looked immaculate majin vegeta never looked better the art style of daima kind of gave it a fresh take as well which for the most part you could see that daima is a little bit different looking than super if you go to super and you come to this you're gonna see that there's an art style difference and i wasn't necessarily mad at it it felt a little bit softer and again that seems like what the approach and the attempt they're trying to make with this would still trying to keep it edgy because again they're kind of really diving deeply into this whole lore of the demon realm because that little guy Goma we find out that he's kind of been watching Bobbity and watching the whole Majin Buu saga in general and how Bobbity was able to control Deborah like he was kind of low-key hating on Bobbity it was just like bruh what are you doing here and you can see that they were definitely uninformed about a lot of stuff outside the demon world because both Goma and Degasu were shocked at powerful people like Vegeta during the Buu saga. They didn't even understand necessarily what Key Blasts are because they were referring to Key Blasts as magic and saying that basically the Z Warriors powers are magic and it looks like they're using white magic so they don't even really understand about Key, about none of that stuff so the Demon Realm is very closed off from the regular world I would say. Because you gotta think about it too like they're watching a recap of something that already happened of the Majin Buu saga so they're actually a little bit late to 
of the party finding out that you know Deborah was defeated and essentially now Goma is the king of the demon realm by default it's like yeah in terms of where this is taking place in the story that already happened and that was a very big deal I mean they damn near connected with the entire universe so to speak when this battle went down against Boo so the fact that they didn't know that again the demon realm is very much so separated from everything else and later on in the episode we find out even more of how separated it is with guards and stuff like that and as the episode progresses it starts to slowly throw in breadcrumbs of where things are going and again how much knowledge Goma and Degasu have about stuff like even the Dragon Balls when they're seeing the Dragon Balls and these little flashback clips from the Majin Buu saga they're referencing Purunga. so you can see that they understand something about the Namekians because obviously Purunga is the dragon of Namek but they didn't really know about Shenron so they were a little shocked and then it kind of had a little bit of a contradiction there because they knew about Purunga which Purunga was always able to give three wishes if I'm not mistaken I forget if after Guru passed if they were still able to do three wishes but for the most part that was common knowledge that okay Purunga could do three wishes and Shenron could do one so when he was shocked about oh my god Earth's dragon can do three wishes I'm like bro Oh, wasn't yet just talking about Purunga and Purunga could do three wishes so I was a little confused there felt like a little bit of a slip up in the writing of like bruh Purunga could do three wishes why are you shocked about this if you knew about Purunga but apparently they've been searching for Namekians and they're shocked when they see Dende again this is just like all new information I'm curious how they stumbled upon this whole event of what happened with Majin Buu I guess that's something that they could have tossed in there like what led them to finding out about all of this that went down to begin with but it seems as though there's a quest for power that they're on because with Deborah and Boo being defeated and Bobbity essentially Degasu was like well oh my you're king of the demon realm by default now let's go and honestly that was for the most part around 10 and a half minutes of the episode it was essentially recapping stuff from the Majin Buu saga really sick reanimated scenes from the Buu saga and kind of getting a little bit of exposition about Degasu and Goma and kind of what they're about and what they're up to but I will say that for the first 10 and a half minutes it felt like it was trying to again do both give you a little introduction to these characters but remind Dragon Ball fans why they love Dragon Ball and be like yo anybody that want to check this out you can watch this you already know everything you need to know in these first 10 minutes I'm not going to complain about it necessarily in fact I kind of enjoyed seeing some of those reanimated moments but then we're introduced to a third character Dr. Arinsu which is Degasu's sister essentially the Supreme Kai Shin's sister by default as well I'm not sure about her age I don't think it confirmed that because again we know Degasu is Supreme Kai's younger brother but nevertheless now we know that there's a little bit of a family tree that has been kind of explained thus far connecting Shin with all of these people which it makes sense because a lot of people were kind of curious about well how are they going to play this thing because we saw Supreme Kai in the trailers but if I'm not mistaken around this time period he was supposed to be fused still with Kabito so they try to clear it up later in the episode but I kind of can't remember exactly when and at what point was he separated because it was a little bit of a blur at this point between Super and Z and stuff like that but yeah they have had to make sure if this was going to be a central focal part of the story like yo it's about Supreme Kai's siblings or they're a big part of it at the very least in the beginning you kind of got to separate him and Kabito because yeah it makes sense but since Deborah has been eradicated and the demon realm is now up for Goma Arinsu gets into a debate with him essentially like yo dog I want some funding because she's seemingly like a scientist Dr. Arinsu she's like yo you're gonna make sure my funding is good right and after a little bit of a debate she kind of scares him into saying like yo you know them Z warriors he is son. like yo they just clean Majin Buu out what you think gonna happen if they come through you know what I'm saying it's gonna be a wrap which kind of prompts them into thinking okay how are we going to make sure that we stop that from happening because again their quest is to dominate the demon realm and possibly even more than that and it goes again into their ignorance about how powers work in the Dragon Ball world or whatnot because Degasu thinks that the Z Warriors powers must be white magic and wonders if a black wish will be accepted because they came up with the idea hey let's use the Dragon Balls let's find those dragon balls that they have over there on earth and get rid of these people that are a threat to us but again they're thinking with magic white magic black wishes all of this stuff so they wanted to kind of balance it out because they didn't think the dragon would actually accept the wish like yo just destroy them and in there burst the idea to wish the z warriors into children again young again wouldn't be necessarily a black wish but also it would make them 
weaker. And high key, it just straight up made me think of Pilaf in the beginning of Dragon Ball GT. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you like, oh, this was fresh. No, no, no. They straight up reutilized that idea and that concept from Dragon Ball GT. Like they try to be a little bit more creative with it where with Pilaf, it was an accident. He was there like, hey, I wish you was a kid again so I could really teach you a lesson. Where with this one, it was basically them making deductions based on assumptions about the type of magic that the Dragon Ball characters are using, which again, it's not even magic, it's key. But yeah, I wasn't a big fan of it, but I guess there's only so many ways that you could really pull that off of turning them into kids and how you would do it. But yeah, a lot of people that said, this is like GT at the very least with that instance. Yeah, you're kind of right. But then we find out that they want to use the second wish, because remember there's three wishes, to be able to get the quote unquote evil third eye the legendary tertian oculus and bro i ain't gonna lie i was kind of like yo we talking about third eyes like what are we doing here fam i know there's gonna be somebody screaming out dragon ball went woke and it goes again even further establishing the lore of the demon realm which you could tell that the demon realm is going to be central to dragon ball daima because apparently the evil third eye was something that was passed down through the demon kings even deborah's father which i don't think we ever heard about deborah's father at the very least officially in the show but his father king Abura was one of the people that was passing down the evil third eye and it's said that if it's placed on the forehead it can grant unbelievable power but wait it gets better because it goes from talking about third eyes to well because they're dealing with dragon balls apparently they have their own Namekian that they've had for a while and he's thousands of years old because they're going to be bringing in Neva the Namekian and as Neva shows up again he's been around for a very long time he's surprised to hear that there are still other Namekians alive which yeah it seems as though planet namek and the namekians in general have just been dealt a raw hand like they were all separated they all been through a lot like even besides frieza it seems like just the namekians were done wrong at the very least from our universe i know universe 6 is different and stuff like that but yeah the namekians even going like if you read the manga with the granola the survivor and that namekian like namekians always get in really messed up situations that they don't deserve to be in now granted we don't know all of the details for him but the fact that he's been the soul namekian in the demon realm and he hasn't seen one in so long it's kind of crazy then as the episode progresses we find out that essentially they call the regular world the outside world like this is how separated the demon realm is from anything they even have a guard at the gate that guards people from going in and out of the demon realm and you gotta actually specify which i guess technically at this time point they don't know about different universes because that doesn't get explored until you know super but in order to go from the demon realm to like the regular outside world they got to specify the universe and even the number and apparently the number three is the closest to earth so they're bringing in lore that again was only explained in super but also a lot of this stuff while they're talking about it amongst each other can't really be talked about in front of the z warriors because obviously they don't find out none of this stuff until super and super doesn't happen until after dragon ball daima but as they approach the gate the guard says that well somebody already went to earth the, this person Arinsu, and that kind of makes them angry like yo what the hell we were just with her what is she trying to pull here and with all of that we finally reach getting to a current day moment with the z warriors the people that we actually you know tune in for and it starts off with trunks having a birthday and he finally turned nine years old and i remember very vividly that go 10 and trunks were seven and eight so him turning nine is like hey we're getting progression and they tried heavily to address a lot of things like i said they tried at some given point to address the kabito and supreme kai earring situation of them being defused they even tried to address the whole thing of bro why is he so small even though he just turned nine krillin brings that up shout outs to krillin oh by the way what the heck was up with them giving krillin the white around his eyes krillin has never had regular eyes bro what are they trying to pull here you know what i'm saying what, what, what are we doing here and i know i'm all over the place but yeah saiyans apparently get a growth spurt around 15 according to what goku says which makes sense i want to say that was about the time that he left and then he comes back in og dragon ball and he looks more like the goku we know now opposed to the kid that he was majority of og dragon ball but kudos to daima for trying to cover up some of the plot holes and inconsistencies in dragon ball and just kind of some of the what the heck are you doing moments but yeah Yes, they even address Supreme Kai and Kabito separating by finding out that they asked Boo, like, yo, dog, can you swallow us? Okay, that one deserves a pause. I'm sorry. And essentially, they did the same thing that would happen with Vegito, where they got swallowed and spit out, which ultimately separated them. But then we go on to something that Gohan fans, 
get ready. Gohan fans, I know, I know, I know, but technically we're still in the time period where they did Gohan dirty anyway, or Gohan did himself dirty, however you want to call it. Gohan living his life, I guess, because as the party is going on with Trunks and them, Goku is asked, like, yo, what's going on with Gohan? And he says, well, he's kind of being distant. He's busy with his studies, and I'm sure the collective of Dragon Ball fans was like, wow, shocker because again this is the time period where gohan was studying and he wasn't training and he wasn't battling and we don't get to get great gohan moments until far down the road closer to like the superhero stuff or even tournament of power gohan did his thing as well but if you're expecting some greatness from gohan with dragon ball daima i'm sure you're gonna be disappointed we cut to what we've seen in all of the trailers for dragon ball daima and that's that skirmish between goku and vegeta they're having a spar and it looks great i mean it's just the fact that we've seen a lot of it in the trailers so i'm not jumping out of my chair for it but it looked awesome and as all that is going on the demons have arrived at Dende's lookout alongside Neva and they're greeted by Dende and Popo. Degasu tells Dende that they're from the demon realm and it was interesting that he actually said yo to Dende you're a demon as well like look at your pointy ears which I'm not sure if again they're just misinformed like they were misinformed about you know key being magic and things like that but it kind of also plays into a nod going all the way back to when originally Piccolo when he was introduced into the series he was a demon it wasn't until Z where they kind of remade it that he's a Namekian and things like that so I like that aspect of it kind of fourth wall breaking in a weird way or just a nod to some stuff from Dragon Ball lore but I guess technically they would be more so accurate because they know Neva and Neva is like thousands of years old and he's a Namekian so he would know if anything that oh they originally were demons and I'm curious with all this lore how it connects to Dragon Ball Super in terms of if I remember correctly Correctly, the origin of the Dragon Balls were that they were like this giant planet sized ball and then the Dragon Balls were chipped off of that. So when they say that Neva created the Dragon Balls long ago but he also created Tamagis to protect them I'm guessing that he more so created Dragon Balls based off of the shards and you know he's Namekian so he could connect to any Dragon Balls but he didn't actually create the planet sized Dragon Ball. And also shout out to again them building more lore that the Dragon Balls were there from like you can't get to them because you got to defeat these Tamagis which that's also set up clearly Goku and whoever goes with him to the demon realm are gonna have to fight those Tamagis to get their Dragon Balls but Neva is trying to collect the Dragon Balls on earth and essentially they've already been turned to stone because remember they just made a whole bunch of different wishes this is again shortly after Majin Buu was defeated so at first it's a little tough for Neva to get them but clearly this is the most strongest Namekian we've ever seen in terms of being in tune with the Dragon Balls and being able to do things we've never even thought possible with the Dragon Balls because he gathers all the Dragon Balls just by like standing at Dende's lookout. He brings all of them up as stone and then even turns them from stone back into regular Dragon Balls. So this is clearly the most broken Namekian in terms of what he's capable of doing with the Dragon Balls. Like if you think about it, he could just keep making endless wishes. Make three wishes, they go scattering, collect them right back, dust them off, and dude is essentially a cheat code for the Dragon Balls. Also, it felt like an awkward moment where Dende tries to stop Degasu from calling Shenron and gets chopped down and Popo is like super scared after he says like, yo, you want something? You want to do something? And then it kind of went into stuff that is like, bro, really? Where Popo's like, hey, you want some juice? I just, <sighs> Toriyama, when you created Popo back in the day, you was on some bull squirt, homie. Come on, come on. And I say that with all due respect. Of course, rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. I'm just saying, bro, come on. Popo's problematic. Come on. And then the episode pretty much wraps up with the fated wish. Goma asked Shenron for everyone who fought Boo and their friends to be turned into kids again. Shenron says, yo, specify, homie. What, what were you trying to say exactly? And he says, yeah, turn them into first graders and the ones that are already like at that age, little kids, turn them into babies. And since he specified that he wanted everybody that fought Majin Boo and their friends to get turned into children, one of the questions that fans was like, yo, we haven't seen Gohan in the trailers. What's going on with him? More than likely, wherever Gohan is, he is going to be a kid as well. He's just going to probably be at home studying and figure out, wait a minute, why am I a kid again? So yes, Gohan is also turned into a child along with everybody else, unless there's some technicality. But pretty much everybody that was involved in the Majin Buu saga got turned into first graders or 
babies. Like Goten and Trunks are probably going to be babies, which is crazy. Homie finally got turned into a nine year old after like 20 years. And then they're like, nope. And the episode ends off like that with a preview for episode two. Very, very brief of a character that was kind of shadowed in the demon realm. We saw him for like a split second while Goma and Degesu were kind of like, you know, plotting or whatnot. Because the next episode is called Glorio and it seems like he's going to play a major part. And overall, with the first episode, it was pretty cool. It wasn't anything like, oh my god, Dragon Ball is back or whatever you want to say. Like, it wasn't something that had me jumping out of my chair. It was kind of interesting. I appreciate them expanding on the lore with the demon realm and building things up and the setup for the Tagamis that Goku is probably going to fight when he gets to the demon realm to try and turn everybody back. It definitely felt GT-esque when he made the wish, although they kind of got a little specific about it. But for the most part, it was a cool first episode. I'm honestly like, all right, we got... All the stuff that we expected from Daima, they got turned into children. We got these demon realm people, the dude that kind of was like Bobbity. We got all of the stuff that the trailers promised. Now moving forward is what's going to be decisive for Dragon Ball Daima and how everybody feels about it. Because the first episode was cool. It was dope. But yeah, moving forward, the plot and how everything turns out is what's really going to be decisive on whether or not this is GT 2.0, like a lot of fans are trying to coin it, or it's going to be its own thing and it's going to rock out and be something fire. But let me know how you felt about this episode. What do you think about Dragon Ball Daima thus far? So laugh for this one. I'm Tim. As always, people, have an awesome day. Subscribe and hit that bell to get more. Thank you so much. Another day, or maybe I'm crazy